Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk about platform distribution function, but mainly focus on the latest QCD and the recent development on the platform distribution calculation. So it's a, a topical convener for the energy fund funds here. Uh, we, we are uh, basically uh, in the hydron structure and the forward QCD, and with the, we have received a lot of LOI in the inter, in the intersection with the theory fund here. A lot of topics are related to the, the latest QCD and PDF. And so if you look at that, it's actually very good, very good overlap between what we receive when the TF05 latest gauge theory, and then some intersection with the computational fund as well. Right, so they are uh, within the, the strong QCD, uh, strong integration QCD, uh, the EF0567. Uh, we actually have a number of PDF white papers uh, that point. And so I don't really have time to go to all of that today. Uh, so there, I just want to point out that uh, there are uh, precision uh, PDF that's been planned, uh, coordinated by all these people. And then there's a big, even bigger one and that focus on the intersection between the high energy uh, physics photon distribution function and other distribution associated with the electron ion colliders. And then today I will be mostly focused on the, the recent white paper we put up on, on archive. Uh, it's about the latest QCD calculation on the platform physics. It's actually only 14 page long, so you actually can read them uh, probably in, in a copy break. And I like to, this is called it by Zora and myself, and we like to get a lot of this uh, contributing order, Mafa and uh, Kate are here. So if you have more questions, you can also talk to them a little bit on, on this particular white paper. Right, so the EF06, we have a, a number of questions for question week when we start with the snow mass. Uh, procedure we want to answer. And a lot of them, there's a whole list of questions about the 15, 14 of them, you can find it in the link. But I just want to point out like a lot of questions that people, that our participants come up with is associated with the accuracy of the PDF. So as we all know that the PDF is essential uh, to really be able to, for us to really constrain the standard model um, uh, signals so that we can uh, basically discover either uh, confounding QCD or we can have uh, really determine the new physics and also do some uh, precision of uh, physics associated with the LRC. And so, so there are number, I don't expect you to read them, but there's a, all these are the, the accuracy of the PDF come out a few times. If we want to understand further that on a higher level of the QCD and other hydron structure, that, that's all very interesting for, for the participants. And so, so as many of you know, the PDF, uh, have been, uh, there are a lot of blues that have been doing the global PDF uh, fit and they are doing a fantastic job uh, by trying to provide us the best, best pattern distribution fits that we can use uh, in various uh, from LHC to even neutrino physics. And so, but unfortunately, um, so there is no good way to really combine all this data. Sometimes you have very clean data, that's great. Sometimes in certain region, we have a lot of data we have very con constrained and very, very nicely. But the, but the, the global fit is not just coming from the experiment. You also require the theory input. And people are really talking about when we move on to the, the next decades, the theory uncertainty, we should also try to quantify that. And that goes to you know, how, we, how we analyze the data, right? The, it's not easy to combine decades or decades of data into, uh, to, to fit them. And sometimes we have to choose data set. And sometimes we have to make some choices. And sometimes when data are really scarce, such as the strange uh, uh, measurement coming from strange, that can be really, really difficult uh, for, for us to get a good uh, global fitting from that uh, particular flavor uh, PDF. And so a lot of time there have been a lot of discussion that whether we should be assuming the strange distribution equal to anti-strange or, or even charm for that matters. And there are a, a number of assumptions uh, coming in. And so, so here's where we hold uh, as the latest Practitioners, we are like to really see what we can do, and that they should get to shed some light in some of this assumption and reduce the error. So, if you take a step back in the original snow mass, the last snow mass, that was about 2013, when it's planning, the latest QCD is kind of still in the era when we do something called traditional method that we use operator product expansion that we take like something called moments. So, instead of calculating the the distribution function uh, for the set unpolarized or the spin uh, or transversely polarized, 
we calculate the integral of that, right? And sometimes it's okay, uh, but, but a lot of time, experiment really want to find out, like you want to have that region really hard to make your experiment, we say large X or even small X region, right? But they just cannot tell you, we only tell you the integral of that. And so, so this is, and this is okay, as long as say we can do enough moment, and then we can do a reverse transfer, and then we can pull out some information with the Q, or the distributions. Unfortunately, because we put the symmetry, this applies to pay, and that applies to pay is as you go on to the, the second, the third, beyond that, it gets really, really difficult to do the calculation um, by blue faults. Right, so, but, but even, even that, they have been, we have still pushing on toward the precision moment, so they are still quantity that's very useful, and I'm just going to give you one of the such example, like things like our tensor charge, for example, is a zero moment for the transversity distributions. And so with the latest QCD, we have been, since 2013, we have been able to do that calculation very well and the precision almost closes to the actual uh, coupling that is well known experimentally, but unlike uh, the port, uh, the actual charge, tensor charge wasn't quite known as well. So we could you be use the latest tensor charge as a constraint, which basically constrain the, the differences between the up quad and down quad sort of this area. Without a little constraint, then we can actually improve from, say you take a subset of the experiment, the data try to extract the same distribution, which give you this yellow band. And with the latest constraint, you can actually reduce the error band significantly. So this charge itself have no information about the distribution or come from the data, but by just simply uh, replace such a constraint, you can actually reduce the error of the distribution quite a lot. So there are still a lot of work going on in this direction that we can imagine we're doing the strange moments that can also helpful, very helpful to constrain some of this strange uh, distribution. And they are uh, a work by Kai QCD and, and PNDME that's going on toward that direction. But the most interesting and excited for many of us uh, is, is this holy grail uh, in a way that we, we have a way to calculate the, the Belkin S dependence directly um, using PDF and uh, with a PDF. And so this is all kind of started with the Shandong Ji that come up with this idea uh, thinking about the laser uh, photon spin. Angular momentum definition argument that's going on for years. There are multiple workshops going on discussing that, et cetera. And then one day he just kind of like, if you're thinking about the problem, he realized that they can actually all related by a different frame transformation. And then he come up with this idea of using Feynman's infinite momentum frame. And then to try to, and then you can actually derive that, that if you calculate the final boosting momentum major Solomon, so we usually have a latest with complicated dynamic in the background, we create a nucleon and analyze them. And before we kill them, we put in a plot, you know, try to measure very different structure. And so we can measure such major elements. It's quite doable. And it's actually not too expensive because the, this plot we usually put in is time independent. So we can calculate uh, quite reasonably easy. And then at the end of the day, you do a Fourier transformation of the major Solomon. So you have that, you'll be plotting it with different distance, right? And then you do a Fourier transformation of that distance. You get some sort of quasi PDF. That's why the name sometimes people call, uh, call, call the mom method as quasi PDF method. So this is not really the true distribution because the Lycom distribution doesn't really have that momentum uh, information, the boosting momentum we put in. And so to do so, you had to take some sort of large momentum limit. And, and this is where the, a lot of complicated calculation comes in. So the true definition, true PDF is this Q over here in the red here. And so, uh, so they are all, you can do perform one loop. Now, now there's a two loops calculation that you can match out the, the, uh, matching the, this quasi PDF to the true PDF. And they are all, of course, none of this is free. The, uh, it basically, such a method is spent in terms of one over PC squared. So we want the larger the momentum, the smaller the systematic. And there's also a little bit of caveat here as well. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the remaining systematic also depends on the, uh, the, the X. There's also X and one of X. That means that the larger the momentum you get, you can reach to the smaller X and also the larger X. 
So in the meanwhile, we have intermediate momentum. So you got about the middle ground also. And then, so that's one. And there's another class of the mapper that we call short distance perturbation. And there are a, a number of sets of, of methods that exist. And it's a pseudo PDF, basically very similar matrix Solomon, but you use a different expansion in terms of distance rather than one over PV. And there's a, a number of classes that uh, operate that use local operators. So you can have all kinds of four, what we call four point correlator diagrams. And you could have connecting pieces or various different disconnected that, that comes in those calculations. It's more costly, but, uh, but like, uh, like Michael was saying that you can actually get additional information using the Hazard tensor current method. Also, uh, KFA is actually have this before the 2000. And so the calculation is complicated. Only recently, they, they are just still uh, some, some of these latest calculations that they come out. So all this method require us to do a bunch of latest metric supplements. And to do the doing well, we had to make sure that all the latest systematic is under control. So you're not getting the wrong answer because of that hidden bit, uh, monster inside the latest calculation. And they all have, uh, they have some of them share the, the structure. There is a perturbative kernel, and it depends on how the map will work. Uh, you have a different, they have a different way to measure them. So right now, for the current roughly two GED boosting hard drums, you get roughly the range of the X from 0.3 to 0.8-ish. And so this is often, uh, this kernel often complicated. So a lot of time we have a lot of people collaborating with someone that's you know really good at doing this type of perturbative calculation. And in some of the, the short distance uh, uh, fertilization also suffer, the, there's an inverse problem you have to deal with. So that might depends on how you try to extract them. And then the large momentum, uh, the Lamont method, I would try not to use the, the assumed uh, parameterization form. That means that you need to have large momentum and large displacement so that you can do that uh, Fourier transformation and it's job to the wider range of the X. And so they are being, I mean, trying to uh, create a slide to show there's actually a lot of activity going on. Uh, so I was trying to draw things the, the snow mass 2013 to what we are paying right now. And as I was trying to make this plot, I realized that, oh no, that's actually, there are hundreds of publications in between and you won't be able to see anything. And I only had 24 hours a day. So, but, but I tried to point out that there are a lot of new method, the calculation, latest calculation popping out over the year, demonstrating that all this method is actually uh, pretty, pretty well working. And a lot of references are in our white paper. You're welcome to look at that of more detail. And I just want to give you a kind of a, a little bit of the present status of where we are on the latest calculation. But in terms of the nuclear and polarized uh, PDF, that's the most the way of quantity, way of calculating latest quantity. And they are very different method. And so here is the, the what we call isolated non nuclear non singlet for the positive X distributions. And they are, are all these calculations have been either directly calculated physical pile mass or extrapolated to the physical pile mass. That used to take 10 years or 20 years for our traditional moment to get there. And this have actually speed up quite, quite quickly uh, since the only a few years, four or five years before we get there. And so all these calculations still mostly as a single latest spacing. So that this means that they are systematic of the finite value effect discretization we haven't really taken care of yet. But, but yeah, we are kind of getting there, right? First we get to the physical plan mass, then we're starting to deal with other uh, systematic. And they are actually, they are on the way. Uh, they are just not quite a physical plan mass yet. They are very different collaboration, ETNC, Hadron structure, Blue Heaven Group and the Michigan Group. Uh, we all try to kind of look into the, the latest spacing effects and some try very, very fine latest spacing. Okay. <laughs> And then again, the systematic for the final value, et cetera. Um, our time, so I just want to mention that there are also a lot of other studies that we don't, I don't have time to get into, so you can look at them in detail. There's effort on strange charm and glue on PDF. They have uh, calculation move on to the next, next leading order, which is most of the global fit are. And there are also a lot of uh, calculation beyond the twist duke or convenient PDF, uh, the GPD and TMD and the twist duke as well. And so we are now, now everything is sunshine and, and nice, et cetera. 
there are still a lot of challenges we need to overcome. Uh, we would like to get to 5 GED uh, for the boosting momentum. Uh, we don't know how to get there yet. Uh, there are various different issues we still need to uh, overcome. And a lot of them are related to the signal to noise calculation issue that we need to find out a better way and clever way to, to deal with them. And, and so, uh, but, but there are a lot of possible uh, outcome. Uh, we like to be able to uh, to have flavor decom decomposition PDF, we will be able to uh, contribute greatly on the spin dependent PDF, which is much more difficult to measure experimentally. And there are also some complementary to the TMD formologies and um, helping the maybe other three dimensional image and, and many more that we lay out in the white paper. So I'm running out of time. I'm just going to leave, leave my conclusion here. Uh, so we are getting somewhere, there are some challenges, but that also means that there are another new opportunity, uh, especially for the young people can make a name out of themselves. And until I think the next phenomenon is we're gonna talk, hear a lot about how the, how the global feed also including latest QCD in part of the determination. Thank you, I'm sorry on our time. Thank you very much. It was a very nice overview, thanks a lot. So questions from the room? Jesse. Hi, Jesse Thaler. Um, so you described different methods of PDF extraction. Have there been attempts to try to combine them? If they have complementary strings to try to have, uh, in, in the same spirit as part-time shower matrix element matching, trying to have, you know, LAMAT and SDF matching? Um, so the, so there, there, are, um, there are certain certain calculation, for example, I think Martha is the uh, expert here. So there are certain metrics fundament in terms of the short distance uh, uh, filtration and among that, that shares some type of the uh, the momentum. It depends on what, what's your momentum range. With the large momentum, uh, ideally you want to go as large momentum as possible. And uh, with the short distance, uh, so is the short distance uh, filtration method. And so with the pseudo PDF, they share similar metrics fundament that you could in principle expanding your momentum range, and then you can have overlapping uh, a momentum that allow you to do the calculation. But I, so, so that goes a little bit more technical, right? So we, if you want to have the momentum really large, that means you doesn't have a good overlap with a smaller momentum. And a lot of short distance uh, variations still rely on you taking the ratio of the small momentum. And so you kind of have to kind of work out your map and see what pays off and what doesn't. More questions from the room? We have questions there on the Zoom? Okay, I have one question for you. So will PDFs on the lattice be competitive with global feed determinations by the time EIC comes around? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Uh, so so I, I'm gonna go to my summary slide. So, uh, so the precision we need <laughs> And how much progress you may really depends on the resources. So there are hum, uh, human resources and then computational resources. And a lot of time we are actually bounding by the computational resources. We have to see how, what's the precision we can calculate. And with some of the, if we want to reach to the next order of the momentum that we can really reduce those systematic error, we probably need some, some of that some of the young people to have some, or even have some of the out of the bus thinking to try to see whether we can get there faster rather than just kind of do the calculation proofs, right? So um, yeah, the progress is limited by the resources. And in terms of polarized PDFs, I know you mentioned them on one of your slides. Right, How right. much insight do we expect from so the piece, the, So I, I put it in my backup slide, so with the polarized, actually we can in principle do better. So right now, uh, so this is the uh, longitudinal polarized PDF. Uh, so we only have Lamont method. And so a lot of current PDF actually make more assumption in, in this case. So the, uh, the theory error is not there. With helicity, uh, we compare with the global fit, um, which again is really difficult to have a clean and, and data wise. And we actually have be able to do better for the transversity. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. More questions from the room or Zoom? Okay. If not, thanks again. Thank you very much.